Hello, my awesome fourth grade artist. We're gonna be starting a new project. We're gonna be creating these oil pastel tigers. So I think probably most of you've used oil pastels before, but we're just gonna have a little refresher course in this. And we're gonna learn about a new artist. His name is Henri Rousseau. He was from France. And so he was an artist. Let me find one of his paintings that I'm gonna show you. Let me move this one out of the way. <clears throat> Remember I said his name is Henri Rousseau. That's French. So when you look at his name, to us that looks like Henry, but I'm pronouncing it how you would in French language. And he was a primitive artist. That means that he was not trained in school how to be an artist. He didn't go to college to learn how to be an artist. He taught himself and he would often visit the zoo. He loved animals, he loved to go to the zoo and that would give him ideas to put the animals in these imaginative environments. So this one is called Jungle with Tiger and Hunters. Your teacher has a copy of this. It's kind of dark, I'm trying to hold it close to the camera. It's kind of dark for you to see. But you see the tiger here hidden in all of this vegetation. So he's kind of made up these plants that would be in a jungle. These aren't necessarily real plants. He's just used his imagination. And his paintings are known for this, having lots of vegetation and these imaginative plants in this world that he creates. And you can kind of see in silhouette here, silhouette is just like the shadows of the hunters. So you see the tiger over here, he's hiding and the hunters are here. The tiger kind of does look scared. Um, but this is just a typical idea of what his paintings would look like. So we're not going to be making a scene, we're just going to be doing a tiger. And before you start this lesson, teachers, I want you to refer back to your lesson plans and I want you to show the students the YouTube video uh, called the extended book trailer for the fantastic jungles of Henri Rousseau and that will give them an idea of what some of his artwork looks like and we're just going to be doing close-up faces of some tigers. These are some examples from Cassie Stevens blogspot.com. She is a, an art teacher in Nashville and she did a similar project uh, th like this uh, but she used black glue and she used chalk pastels. We're gonna not be using the black glue and we're just gonna be using oil pastels to create, create our tiger. But I just wanted you to see how different the faces of each tiger looked. I'm gonna do a drawing tutorial with you, but your tiger does not have to look exactly like mine and it's best what it does it. I want everybody's to be unique and individual. So to begin with, let's talk a little bit about what we're gonna do. You're gonna get a piece of black paper and we're going to be using the elements of art. We're gonna use line, shape, color, and value. So we're going to be drawing lines. And when we draw those lines, we will create shapes. We will be using color. We're gonna use lots of color because we're gonna be blending our, 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 our oil pastels, it's hard to say. And we're gonna be using value. Value is the lightness and darkness and the shades in between. So we're gonna be creating value on our tiger, like around the edges of his face. I'm gonna show you how to make it darker and the value will get lighter as you go towards the middle. The principles of design are going to be movement. When you use oil pastels, because your colors often go in different directions, it creates a sense of movement in your picture. And then contrast, because you're gonna to need to think about what color you're gonna put in the background so that your tiger really stands out. So you do, wouldn't wanna put one of the colors you used in the face, you would wanna put something different. So let's begin, we're going to get a piece of black paper and you're gonna turn it vertically with the long side up and down, make sure you do that. The long side should be up and down, this is called portrait style. Okay, that's very important for how we mat these if yours gets chosen for the art show. Put your name label on the back and then get a white colored pencil and we're gonna draw our tiger. So we're gonna fill our page with him. So you wanna make him really, really big with as little background as possible. So I always start by kind of looking where my middle of my page is. We're gonna start with his eyes. So they would be, uh, if the middle of the paper is here, about in the center of this upper part. 
So over a little bit to the side, not right in the middle, I'm gonna make an elliptical shape that kind of slants down. I'm gonna need to draw dark so you can see. Normally I would draw really light and that's how I want you drawing because if you mess up, you can just fix it really easy. But I need to draw darker so you can see. So an elliptical shape is kind of like a football. And so this one sort of slants down a little bit. I want you to come over about the size of an eye. So I'm, my eye's about this big. And then this one is gonna slant. It's gonna slant this opposite direction. So it's kind of slanting up. So they both end up slanting this way. All right, now the nose. A tigers have this really big, wide, broad nose. So we're gonna come down to about the middle with these two straight lines. Let's go back though and do one more thing in our eye. Let's make his uh, pupils, his irises. So let's make a half circle. Don't go all the way to the bottom. Do that in both eyes. Don't go all the way to the bottom. Leave some black underneath it. And then make these elliptical shapes that go up for his pupil. Cats have these slanty eyes like that. All right, now for his nose. So we're gonna go in between these two lines, the bottom of them. We're gonna kinda connect them and make this line that kinda curves around a nose shape. and then his muzzle. So where your nose meets this uh, line that goes up, you're gonna create a line that goes around and it's gonna come all the way up to his middle of his nose. And you're gonna do the same thing, try to make it about the same size. And they both go up. And then we're gonna make his bottom of his mouth, okay? Now we're going to make the head that goes around all of this. So. We'll start a little below the middle of his muzzle and go around. I'm kind of drawing with my finger to kind of get an idea. We've talked about doing that before. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna go around almost to the edge of my paper. It kind of goes up. It's not perfectly round. I'm leaving room for the ears and it goes here. See how big that is? He almost fills the paper. And then I'm gonna make my ears. They kinda go up in here in the corners and that's a rounded triangle. I didn't make it a perfect triangle. Then I'm gonna make this part here. We're gonna just color that in later with some fur. Well, I'll show you how to color and make it like fur. And then let's make his body. So at the bottom of his face, just go down to the bottom of your page. Whoops, I hit the camera, it's shaking a little bit. And then down on this side, and then we're going to make a half circle that will be his white patch on his chest. Now, right now, this could look like any, this looks like it could be like a panther or any kind of cat, but what really makes tigers distinct is their stripes. So, and a neat fact is that on a tiger, their stripes are all different. So you don't have a tiger with, two different tigers with the same stripes. So I'm just gonna kinda draw in where those will be. So I'm gonna make this zigzaggy line here. It's actually, I'm using two lines and making shapes where we'll color those in later with black. But this just gives me an idea of where I'm gonna be coloring in later. I'm gonna do the same thing over here these zigzaggy they don't have to be perfect because your black oil pastel will cover all of this up okay now we're going to make in the center he's going to have this stripe that comes down so i'm going to make this long sort of triangle curvy shape like that and then i'm going to go right over it and overlap with some of these zigzag shapes Top one's bigger, the smaller one, the, the bottom one is a little bit smaller. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna go to my curvy line with these zigzag shapes. The chest is gonna be like a white patch, so it'll the zigzags will stop there. And 
Okay, so now it's time to start coloring with our oil pastels. We are not going to use black until the very, very end because it will mix in with all of your colors and it will make them look muddy. They won't be bright and intense. So we're gonna start with our colors. You need to start towards the top and work your way down because you don't wanna have your hand in where, where you've uh, worked and it will smear it. So you wanna start at the top and work your way down. So I'm gonna actually start at the top where the uh, white part of the ears are. And I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna make my edges See how I'm just kind of making them kind of rough like fur? And then I'm gonna color that in. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm not trying to make a perfect line. I'm making it jagged on the edges like fur would look. And then you color it in. Okay, now I'm gonna do some of his ear. Remember, we're going to do value, so I'm going to make around the edge of his ears darker, and I may, I'm going to start, you've got lots of colors to choose from here with your oil pastels. I'm going to start with this darker reddish-orange color, and I'm just going to kind of color around the edges. I'm going to leave a little gap where my white line is because later we're going to go back and outline all of those white lines with a black oil pastel. So you can kind of leave those. And then I'm going to pick up my orange and just kind of go in, going right over some of that red. And that's the thing about oil pastels. They look best when you blend them. So they aren't just one solid color. They're a mixture of different colors that you have blended. And you're gonna get these little pieces that come off. You can just kind of pick your paper off and shake it sometimes and those will come off. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on the other ear. I'm gonna go around my edges with this red. Last year, because you're in fourth grade, so last year, some of y'all, if you were here, you made oil pastel adobe houses and you did an awesome job. So you have experience working with these oil pastels and you know how to do them and blend them. So think about all you learned from doing the adobe houses and apply that to this. All right, so then you would start, I think I'm gonna start by doing the facial features on like his eyes and then I'll go back and work on the orange of him. But I'm just going to make sure my oil pastel is clean. You can, if your oil pastel gets dirty with other colors, you can just wipe it with a paper towel. And I'm going to go around and do the white part of the eyes. But I'm leaving it so I can see my white colored pencil. I'm leaving enough little edge around it where I can see my white colored pencil. Remember I told you later you're going to um, outline that those parts with a black oil pastel. And then I'm gonna do the eye. Ah, so you can decide what color. I'm gonna do green. So I'm gonna start around the edges with a darker green. Same thing on both sides. And then I'm gonna go in with this lighter lime green color. It's really pretty. And kind of blend that in. So his eye has value. It's not all the same as far as lightness and darkness. You have some darker places and lighter places. And then later we'll color that uh, pupil black with our black oil pastel. But remember, we're not using any oil, black oil pastel right now. Okay, now we're gonna start on the head. Again, I'm gonna go in and start out with like a red around the edges. So I'm just kind of coming in with a red. It will Most of it will get covered up later because I'm gonna... I'm just choosing a color that has a darker value. And I just kind of go around my edges. I'm leaving the stripes because they'll be um, black later. You don't have to make your coloring as perfect with oil pastels as you would with crayons or markers. And so that kind of gives you a little more freedom. I like that. Just going around all my edges here. And then I'm even gonna go around the nose because 
around his, this part of his nose would kind of stick up and this part would go down so it would be a little darker. And go around his eyes a little bit, leaving the white colored pencil, leaving a little black around that. And I would do the same thing over there. I'm not gonna do the same thing over there because it takes so long. But then I'm gonna come in, this is like a uh, darker orange. We've got several different shades of orange here. So I'm gonna use the darker one. And I'm just gonna start coming in. I'm going a little bit over that red. So it all blends. And I'm gonna go a little farther out with this. See how I'm doing there? You can choose what colors you wanna use. I'm not gonna go all over everything because I'm gonna bring in even a lighter orange in a little bit. And I'm coloring, it's shaking my camera a little bit because when I'm coloring, I have to press down and it's shaking the table a little bit. So I'm just going around here. Picking up into that red so it blends. Okay, now I'm gonna use my lighter orange. So I'm gonna go in here and you see how it's, it's getting even lighter. We're doing our value. See how he's starting to look? And I can go back in over some of that other with that. I'm just gonna go right back into what I've had already colored. And you'll see it just all blends together really nicely, okay? You can even go in, I have this peach color and make some highlights in here. And when you do this, when you color not perfect with the oil pastel, it makes it look like fur. So you see, I've got a lot of these jaggedy places and it ends up kind of looking like fur, which I really like. I do want to show you the nose though. The nose, I am going to go around this, just the edge part with some orange, but then I'm going to make it lighter because I was, like I was telling you, it will kind of, the nose sticks higher up on his face than the rest of his face. So you're going to see more highlight there. So I'm going to put more of the lighter colors there. Doesn't that kind of look like fur to you? And then I'm gonna also go back again with that peach color and do the same thing on top, just right in the middle and get some more highlights. And you can just keep blending as much as you want with all your different colors, okay? Now, once you have the whole tiger covered, colored with your colors, then you're gonna come back in with your black. So, you're gonna get a black, and I need to, my black is not in here, let me step right over here and get mine. And then you're gonna do your stripes and your outline. So first we'll do our stripes. So these areas that I've left, when you go to color them with your black, you're gonna do like you do with the ears. You're just making them jagged looking. You're not trying to make this perfect shape. Same thing here. See how I'm just going up and down, up and down where my white colored pencil was. And then the same thing here. First, I'm gonna color this um, kind of curvy triangle shape we made, and then I'm gonna color the zigzags. Cause that, if we're not making it perfect, it's gonna look more like fur. Okay, so once you get all your stripes colored in, then it's time to outline. Now, you've got to be careful at this point because your whole tiger is going to, you know what? I almost forgot we've got to do the background. So, you can go ahead and do your stripes, but we have to do the background before we outline. So, you decide what color you want for your background. I used purple on this one. I think I'm going to use blue on the one I'm doing right now. Remember, try to get a color that will contrast with your tiger. So don't use any reds or oranges or yellows. You want a contrasting color. So I'm gonna come in with blue. And in these packs of oil pastels, you have different shades. Let me actually come on this side so you can see it next to the 
colored part. You have different shades of the color. So this is kind of a darker blue. It's really pretty. It's gonna contrast really well with my tiger, with the orange. And you're just gonna start coloring in. But then remember we have different shades of blue, so you can use those to blend so you have value in the background and it's not all the same. All right, so now I'm gonna come in with this lighter blue. I'm gonna tear a little bit of that paper off and I'm gonna go right over some areas of it, just giving that a little highlight. All of this creates lots of movement in your artwork. Okay, so I'm gonna stop right here, but you would finish out your background. Then, now you come in with your black to outline. So you've gotta be very careful with your hand. You wanna hold your hand up in the air so it's not smearing what you did, and you're just gonna go around and outline everything in black. And I, when I outline it, I'm kind of doing like a coloring motion because I want to get a really good black line. Really good strong black line because that will create good contrast. I'm getting rid of his eyes. Just be careful, like I said, with your hands. You don't want to smear it I'm gonna even outline the green part of his eye, and then I'm gonna color in his pupil. Let me outline this. And then you would just continue outlining all of the tiger. Let me show you my finished one. So you see where I have outlined all of the places that I had originally drawn with my white colored pencil. Okay, I cannot wait to see how these look. You should spend several weeks working on the oil pastel because it takes a lot of blending and building up layers of color to make these really look good. So make sure, teachers, that they're not just putting one layer of oil pastel. They need to build the layers of their oil pastel. Let them have time to do that. And then if you work really hard, I will put these on Artsonia. And maybe if you work really hard and try to make yours really good, it will get accepted to the Spring Art Show. So I can't wait to see what you do, and I will see you next time. Bye.